Obama Biden promised in his inaugural address that he was going to be a uniter. He was going to bring the country together. And you know what? He actually has, just not in the way he thought. Did you ever think that certain militia groups and BLM would be united along with conservatives and progressive liberals would actually be united? But it's happening, and it's all thanks to Obama, Biden, and the Vax mandate. Now again, let me be clear. This is not pro or anti-vaccination. This is not about should you or should you not get the jab. This is about the fact that this is being used now as an issue to rip and to divide. And what it's actually done, it's made the enemy of my enemy is now my friend. You know, some of those simple age-old truths are really proving to be powerfully, incredibly accurate. When Obama Biden stepped up and said it's going to be mandatory to take love potion number nine or we're going to cancel any work with government contractors because this is going to happen to all government employees frontline workers etc 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 and there would be fines heaped upon private businesses and corporations who had 100 employees or more if they did not also require their employees now have you you do understand that despite Joe Obama Biden saying that, they still haven't technically enacted it. Did you catch what I just said? He didn't even sign an executive order regarding this. He certainly hasn't run any of this by Congress, and this hasn't actually been put out in writing as an order. He said it from the bully pulpit there in the East Room of the White House, and immediately, certain corporations and businesses sprang into action, like the airline industry, and they have begun to get a little taste of what it would be like if their pilots and mechanics and uh, flight attendants didn't show up for work, what that would look like in the form of delays, buildups, and mass cancellation of hundreds of flights in a single weekend in a single weekend, that they would lose nearly 40% of their workforce. You understand that we have states that are now saying in, in the name of health, we are going to fire frontline workers. New York City is bracing. New York is bracing because Monday, November the 1st, it goes into action. What's going to look like in a place like New York City when 25 to 30% of the first responders are not there? Fire, paramedics, 911, police. What, what's it going to look like? What's it going to be like? My wife is a registered nurse. We haven't lived in New York. Well, it's got to be at least 14 years. But she has kept her nursing license current there. We keep, she keeps her license current in Florida. She keeps her license current in Ohio. She gets emails from hospitals and places in New York asking her if she'd like to come to work. We don't live anywhere near New York, and she certainly wouldn't work there under these types of conditions or this environment now at all. I mean, this is, this is literally now how desperate they've come. They, they thought they could bully this. You would line up, you would capitulate. But you didn't. And what they cannot accept is the fact that this is a free society. And they need to let adults be adults. You know, if they had just been straight with us from the very beginning, from the very beginning, if they had reported the cases and the deaths accurately. States are all over the place when they found out that they got more money for more things. 
You know, they got X number of dollars if a person had the virus. They got X number of dollars if the person had the virus needed a ventilator. And they got X number of dollars if the person died from the virus. So it didn't matter if you were run over by a freight train, somehow it was connected to the virus. Because again, somebody came up with the unbrilliant idea of tying a tiered money system into this. So we really accurately don't know the actual numbers. The CDC tells us that approximately 14% of all Americans have had the virus. Maybe it's a little more than that. Maybe it's a lot less than that. We really don't know because the reporting was not accurate. And because right from the very beginning, this was politicized, President Trump would say one thing, Dr. Fauci would say something else, and the media wanted a foil for Donald Trump, and so they propped up Anthony Fauci to near godlike status and never really examined his record on AIDS, his abysmal failure when it came to AIDS, and his connections to the lab in China, which is now more than likely responsible for this mess that the world finds itself in. But they, they bought into it, and, and they're all in now. And as a result of that, now that time has gone by, reasonable thinking Americans have looked at things and said, you know what, I'm going to wait. Again, I, I'm not advocating one way or the other. What I'm advocating is that if you don't have the right to you and to your body and what you will decide, what will and will not go in it, then you have no rights whatsoever. And for those of you on the abortion side who want to jump in and say, oh, now all of a sudden you, you, you conservatives are all about my body, my choice. That's right. My body, my choice. Abortion is not a my body, my choice issue. You're making a decision for another body inside a body. And you have circumvented the rights of that other human being. So... This is the big push, and I've told you before, this is not about left versus right, it's about right versus wrong. It's not about conservative versus liberal, Democrat versus Republican. It's about right versus wrong, them versus us. There is a, I, 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 this is coming on Friday, an explosive commentary you are not going to want to miss on the YouTube channel, on the Rubble channel, regarding What's really about the mass vaccination that they do want to mandate, they do want to require, they do want to tie it to a, a, a digital proof, and they're going to tie your bank accounts, your credit, your work, everything is going to be tied to that. And so as the years go by and as they update mandates for this and mandates for that, if you do not stay current and do as you're told, you will be cut off from your money. You will be cut off from your livelihood. You will be cut off from your ID. You will be cut off from your passport, etc., etc., etc. So right now, apparently, they are perfectly willing to be short firefighters, nurses, nurses' aides, Frontline workers, paramedics. Dan Bongino said this correctly. The virus didn't do us in, but these mandates are. The virus didn't do us in, but the mandates are. And that's where we're at right now. And what's amazing is how when there is somebody in Holly Weird or an athlete that stands up and thumbs their nose at the flag and thumbs their nose at law and order and thumbs their nose at what we would call traditional values, they are heroes. You know, Megan Rapinoe and the, and the women's soccer team and, and the WNBA that nobody even knew their uh, Chicago, didn't even know their team had a women's basketball team and had no idea they won the championship, and when they had a celebratory parade through Chicago, nobody came. And the WNBA is one of the wokest sports on the planet. It's all about political advocating rather than just play the game. Just play the game. And of course, athletes have been used and dragged into all kinds of things, and one athlete said enough. Kyrie Irving plays for the Brooklyn Nets. And he made the decision that for him, 
he was not going to get love potion number nine. And because of the mandates and the requirements within New York City that you can't enter a restaurant, uh, a theater, a sports venue, if you have not had the jab, he didn't have the jab. So right now, he's out of work. You know, and he's making a bold declaration. He said, this, this isn't just about me. This is about people who don't have the means to fight back. I, I Financially, yeah, I don't like losing out on money, but, but I'm okay. But somebody has got to say, whoa, enough. Nobody's going to take the power away from me that I have for speaking on these things, you know. And, you know what I'm saying? Like, all these people saying all these things about what's going on with me, and it's just not true. Pay attention to what's going on out in the real world. You know, people are losing their jobs to these mandates. Uh, people are having to make choices with their own lives, which I respect. I get to do whatever I want with this. This is one body that I get here, one God body that I get here. And you telling me what to do with my body and it has nothing to do with the organization. I'm gonna put that out there. It has nothing to do with the Nets. It has nothing to do with my teammates. This has everything to do with what's going on in our world. And I'm being grouped in to something that's bigger than, than just the game of basketball. But I'm staying grounded in what I believe in. It's just as simple as that. It's not about being anti-vax or about being, uh, you know, on one side or the other. Like, it, it's just really about being true to what feels good for me. Uh, you know, I'm still uncertain about a lot of things, that, and that's okay. You know, if I'm going to be demonized for having more questions and taking my time to make a decision with my life, then that's just what it is. Like, I got to make these myself. Because it's going to continue to revolve around this and that. And, yo, you're going to lose out on money. And you're going to lose out on this. Like, so what? It's not about the money, baby. It's not always about the money. It's about choosing what's best for you. You think I really want to lose money? You think I really want to give up on my dream to go after a championship? You think I really just want to give up my job? I'm not going to be used as an as as a person in this agenda you know like i i'm not i'm not even gonna speak on that i'm just saying like it should be not it should not be divided amongst all of us it should just be understood and respected ah it's amazing isn't it dave Chappelle was the darling of the left wing the liberal media especially last summer during all of the george floyd upheaval but as soon as he didn't walk the line and talk the narrative regarding the transgender community, immediately he felt the backlash. Now, we've already dealt with that, so I'm not going to recover that. And again, I'm no supporter of Dave Chappelle. A lot of his stuff I personally don't find funny. I really don't. And um, his his politics and his point of view is, is, is skewed in a way that, I'm, I'm sorry, it's just not where I'm at, but I will defend his right to say it and I will defend his fans rights to have access to it or anybody else that wants access to it and now he's feeling what it's like to be some of the very people that he has made fun of who have been canceled and been crushed and silenced and now he's feeling a little of it he don't like it Kyrie Irving I don't know his full political view but he has the right to say what he said and while he was getting trashed by woke sports outlets, who on the one hand will uphold Colin Kaepernick as some type of hero, as they escorted Kyrie, well, Floyd Mayweather said, not so fast. America is the land of the free. Freedom of speech, freedom of religion, and supposedly freedom to choose. Never be controlled by money. I respect you for having some integrity and being your own man. A free mind makes his own choices, and a slave mind follows the crowd. Stand for something or fall for anything. One man can lead a revolution to stand up and fight for what's right. One choice, one word, one action can change the world. It's crazy how people hate you for being a leader. I hope your actions encourage many others to stand up and say enough is enough. Respect to you, Kyrie. Boom. Good stuff right there. So, God bless Floyd Mayweather for standing up and stepping up for a friend and saying, hey, this isn't about, and you, and you heard even Kyrie say, this isn't about being vax or anti-vax. 
This is about personal liberty, personal rights. This is a civil liberties issue. This, if you do not have the right over your own body, then you don't have the right to anything. Keep that in mind. Don't get distracted in the vax, unvax, back and forth that happens on social media, the mask, no mask, hat, no hat that goes on. Put that aside and ask yourself this. Do I really have the right to insist that someone else receives a medical procedure that they have been given the facts, they understand the risks, and they have made a decision. Can't I just live with them, with their decision, and I will have mine? Is that not, at the end of the day, what American rights and liberties are about? <laughs>